Hi guys, so welcome back to Vlog Media. This is again me, Mark, and for today I think we will talk about something different, which is about books. Yeah, because, well, I've been quite reading quite a while, uh, and I'd like to share some information about, or share some knowledge about what I read in, in my readings, because I read a lot, and um, yeah, so books really enhance your knowledge in, in terms of a lot of things, like knowledge, and the way you speak, culture, and of course about the current situation which is current events and uh, yeah so follow me through and we will discuss a book today let's talk about routine so when you talk about routine you should talk about the things you do every day the things you do not really every day but the things that you usually do and that you would not do because it's a routine so it can be a routine to go to work a routine to, to eat somewhere it can be financial or business it could be a social event a routine so in short routines are habits and habits actually make up most of our day and it's really what really makes of us as a person habits so habits is actually built by uh, the environment around us being influenced by the environment around us and we became who we are what we are and that's habits. And for today, I think we will talk about uh, a book that I've read quite a few years ago during the pandemic, and that's really greatly, greatly helped me a lot in actually working in this video. Because without it, then I would not have any motivation to do these videos. Yep. And the book is called Atomic Habits by James Clear. So the book mainly talk about habits and how can habits change your life and make you a successful person. And the book says that uh, small habits, bit by bit, when you kind of do it routinely for a long period of time, it can, great, it can make great changes in your life. And actually, it determines the trajectory of where you're going to be, so with these um, habits. So when you talk about habits, there are actually automatic, automatic behaviors that you really got from your environment, as I mentioned earlier. And these are automatic behaviors that you tend to do unconsciously and it's hard to break and it's also hard to, to change the habits because they are actually what makes of you as a person but uh, the book t talks about something about where you can change the habit a bad habit into a good one and in this atomic habits we will discuss you know, the highlights of this uh, the book according to the author a small change in daily habits can cause dominant effects in your life which can change in either way to the good or to the bad. So let's say it's like an example uh, from the book we're in. If you are actually taking a flight, for example, you are taking a flight to London and you're going to New York, and inadvertently the plane turned about five degrees to the north, and you won't really feel the turning of the plane because it's just really, really a very slight change in direction. But after about 10 hours of flight, then you will realize that you've landed not in New York, but you've landed in Toronto which is a totally different place in a totally different country. So that's what it means. So a slight change in the trajectory over a long period of time can actually make drastic differences if you want it to be. So yeah. Habits in general have four types of elements and we'll discuss each of them and we'll also give examples. The first one of which is Q. So Q, so Q is actually the hook to which you are hooked to that habit it is actually the main thing that actually trigger your habit from from doing that kind of habit or or ritual and is followed by a another after cue which is uh, craving so there is actually mental stimulation from that trigger and you will have a craving for that and that triggers the next which is the response which is the action to that habit so you have your cue then which you have your craving and you'll have your response which is the action which is the habit itself and lastly after the habit after doing the habit then you'll have that reward so it's actually a sequence of events so it's cue cravings response or action and reward so let's cite a few examples all right okay so so imagine that you have a habit of eating in a fancy restaurant every week so the cue there is actually uh, when you go out every week you you walk by a restaurant and you see people eating food, dining in the restaurant, and that's your cue. 
and from that cue will trigger your craving to eat because you've done it previously and you've seen it's pressurable to eat in a in a good restaurant and that will stimulate your craving so the more you the more you have that thinking the more you have that craving and because of that intense craving you will go to that restaurant to eat and of course that's the action that's the habit you eat in there you go in the restaurant and eat there go in fine dining and of course the reward is actually eating good food that's one example and the other is uh, cleaning up a messy room so the trigger there is or the cue is the dirty room and the craving there is the uh, thinking of not wanting to stay in a dirty room so you might want to clean it and since you have that thinking the compulsion of thinking that makes you want to do something you do up the cleaning which is the action and the reward is actually staying in a clean room however there are also bad habits such as um, when especially when kids doesn't want to study or they feel lazy to to do their homeworks so that's actually a bad habit so the cue there is actually the the homework so having that homework um, leaves a cue or or leaves a, a hook or a thinking wherein if you have the homework uh, you say ah oh, it's really it's too much and um, I have this homework again every day so that's the cue and the craving there is actually I wanted to I do not want to do the homework so instead I wanted to do something else so it's cue so we, every time you see that homework and there's actually a trigger which is the homework and and along with it is the the thinking the craving the craving of you want to do the homework you want you want to do something else and uh, what they do so i'm gonna go to my phone and i'm just gonna scroll down in my social media in order to pass time and that's the habit that's the action and not doing the homework putting in the social media and wasting a lot of time in it i mean not if anything that's not good in it so you're wasting time and the reward there is actually not doing the homework which is actually not a reward in its in its sense but it's actually what you get from the habit it's not really a reward but it's actually what you get from it it's not actually thinking about the worries of having to do the homework so that's actually a bad habit all right so that's one thing that's one thing you want to change in people who are actually having that kind of bad habit so the first thing you're gonna do if you want to change a rather bad habit is to sit around, ponder about it, and write on a piece of paper the list of habits that you have and that you want to change or can change. That's the first step. So how can you develop um, good habits? So the book mentions about implementation intention, which is providing yourself a clear plan on how to do your do the habit you want to change or or the things that you want to change so it goes by this um, so you need to have a clear um, direction or commitment about changing that habit or making that habit uh, or new habit so what ha what will happen is that you need to avoid vague words such as like um, example um, I might do this I'm going to do this I'm going to clean my room I'm going to study so don't, don't say those things so instead you say such things that in a span of 30 minutes or in the next 30 minutes I'm going to read two pages in a span of a day or or next week I am committed to doing what I need to do I need to clean my room so so you have to put that commitment and conviction to the things that you're gonna do because you need to motivate yourself in order for you to change or probably do have another new habit which you think is quite desirable and can change you in the long run so you need to provide confidence in your commitment so if you want to do that homework don't say that I'm not gonna do this I'm just gonna work on it later on you'll say I'm gonna do this homework in the next hour and I'm gonna finish it today now and if ever I have a homework again tomorrow I'm gonna finish on the same day again so you need to have that confidence in yourself that you can do that okay confidence so psychologically what's really happening here is actually you are priming yourself into commitment and doing that habit so you need to prime yourself this is very very important so the book also mentions that if you need to change your habits you also may need to alter your environment to which you actually do your habits for example 
If I'm working on this script for, for this vlog and I needed a place to go to, which is the library, where I can see a lot of people studying and focusing on what they do. So seeing them around and working on their own stuff makes you want to do your own thing, which is actually planning your own YouTube videos as well. So in short, you, get, you tend to get um, influenced by the people around you by changing the environment, which is actually conducive to that particular habit or routine. So the next advice from the book is to reduce the friction. So what it means is that if you want to create a habit, you want to reduce the barrier of entry for that particular habit. So let's cite a few, one example. Uh, for example, if you are addicted to watching the television every day, where you can do other things instead of watching the TV. So what you're gonna do is that in order to reduce the friction to that, uh, you have you might want to uh, unplug the socket every time you well after watching the TV. So that in that way you actually reduce the friction. Also, you might also want want to take out the batteries from the T remote control. So the next time you come in and sit down on that couch, you won't really find it quite conducive to, to watch the TV. Instead, you want to do a new habit, which is the habit that you want to do aside from watching that television. So in order to implement those habits or eliminate those habits or particularly do your new habit. So the book is explicitly saying about there's a two minute rule. So the two minute rule is that you just have to do something in the first two minutes and your new habit will follow through. So once it follows through, then it gets repeated and over and over again, and that's the new habit. So actually, it's based on Isaac Newton, where in objects that stays in motion, tends to stay in motion, and habits are generally a steady road to progress, and it means that um, once you start going, you just wanna do it over and over again. So in the two minute rule, the most important thing is actually how to get started because it's really important to get really started. So let me cite an example. So if you're not really um, into brushing your teeth, so why not try to put a toothpaste there in a, in a toothbrush and leave it there. And every time you, you go in a particular time, like in the morning, when you see it and you automatically brush your teeth. So it takes about 15 seconds to, to stop brushing your teeth. And from that point, you're completely brushing, completely doing the brushing of your teeth until you're finished. And do it three times a day and you'll form that habit uh, in a, probably a week's time. So, so it's kind of absurd, I know, but it's just one example to in a two minute rule. Also, in order for you to continue maintaining those habits in the long run, it has to be very, very satisfying for you to do those habits because satisfaction is really needed for you to enjoy the habits and enjoy what you do because, I mean, what's the habit for if you're not really enjoying it, right? So, yeah. And the other thing is that um, if you want to keep track of your habits, if you want to keep track of the progress of that habit, you need to make a note whether you are actually progressing towards that habit. For example, actually, if, you're, if your habit is actually to, to walk every day, so initially you won't really like walking, uh, but eventually, if you really like it, you might want to keep track on it as well, because also walking is a good exercise, right? In addition, you would also want to do a contract uh, regarding if you wanna, well, do another habit or probably stop a bad habit that's like smoking or drinking quite a lot. So you wanna put a contract to yourself or, or probably put this contract in letter or tell a friend that you're gonna, not gonna smoke or you're not gonna drink because it's, it's kind of not a good one. So, so having a friend with you or having a contract, written contract that you really respect is actually promotes um, a uh, you know promotes the uh, the habit being uh, continued on. So example of one the habit of not smoking, that's one example, or the habit of doing an exercise every day, just the name of you. So once you have that habit in place. The good thing about habits is that you can actually stack them together. So for example, um, if you have a habit of, um, or if you develop a good habit of, of jogging every day, so you can actually develop another habit on top of that new habit, which is exercising every day. So while exercising, you can actually listen to podcasts that actually can actually help you in your personal development. So you've got two habits now, exercising every day, and listening to podcasts that can actually greatly help you in your future. So two habits in one. So there are actually four rules to, to habits. So number one, uh, you have to really have to make it obvious 
Uh, for example, if you have the habit to, you want to have the habit of cleaning your room every week, so you need to have the cleaning materials in front of your room or or by the door, so it's really accessible. It's actually to make the the rules for the habits, um, the barriers of entry rather to these habits, a lot easier to to access. And number two you have to make the uh, it really attractive for you. So you have to get that reward. And what, what is the reward when you clean the room? So a clean room, right, obviously. And it's, and it's more um, conducive to, to live in a place that's actually really clean. And number three, uh, you have to make it really easy to do. So, so you have to make those tasks easy for you to do. And lastly, uh, you have to make it satisfying. Now, on the contrary, if you want to break a bad habit, so the thing you're going to do is just you're going to reverse those four things I mentioned earlier. So the first thing is you're going to make it invisible and not obvious. You're going to make it attractive, unattractive, sorry, and make it difficult to do. And lastly, it has to be unsatisfying. So the last question here now is what if you cannot develop those habits in any way? Well, first, if you like this video, please click like share comment and subscribe to help this channel grow okay let's this is actually the final tip now so if you can't really work on those habits the best thing that you can actually do is actually look for a coach to help you with that because a coach can help you do the habits or, or start the habits or eliminate those habits you need a coach i actually i am a family medicine consultant um a doctor so what i do is actually i do behavioral changes uh to to my well, to my patients and if they have a bad habit if they're willing to change it i can actually help them so so you need to have a coach uh, to help you with that habit whatever it may be so if it's actually a problem with with some behaviors you need a coach for that or if you want to develop a habit of actually um into sports you need a coach to help you that with that actually so in short if you can't help yourself ask others to help you or find a coach so that's it folks, so basically we talked about uh, how to develop habits and how to eliminate those bad habits. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and please don't forget to comment down below just to help me improve and, and uh, I really, really appreciate your feedback. So thank you now, thank you and bye bye for now.